If you've never seen the beautiful Yu Zhou in concert before, don't miss what will be the most mind blowing piano playing you've ever heard tonight. At 8 p.m., she has this little gig at Carnegie Hall. Or if you've never seen a sexy Chinese chick in a tiny tight little dress with Puerto Rican booties, don't miss her tonight at 8 p.m. She has this little gig at Carnegie Hall. And someone commented, you definitely have a future in concert promotions. <laughs> Yu Zhu Wang is one of the most celebrated concert pianists in the world. But when not on stage, the 26-year-old could easily be mistaken for a college student hanging out in her dorm. I need my Pink Panther. Whoa! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Instead of an entourage of people, like a star or a prodigy, I'm just there, like a normal person, creating art. There's a cartoon. It's a guy with a saxophone, and the woman is, I guess his wife, was on the phone. It's like, it's the downstairs neighbors again. They say you have fluent facility, but you need more emotional <laughs> content or something. That's pretty much exactly what happens. My downstairs neighbors, there's always, I always have problems downstairs. But my other neighbors are very nice. They're like, oh, you, you know, the beautiful music you play. I mean, I'm hardly here. I'm here like once, one day, two days, every month. The life of a world-class soloist is oftentimes just that, solo. Yuja lives alone, practices alone, and leads a relatively nomadic existence. Traveling to perform on the world's biggest stages around a hundred times a year. <laughs> See, there's Venezuela. I was just there. And I have this insane idea. I read it somewhere when I was on a flight where you think the whole globe is your house. So for New York, I guess this is my office and I hope I'll have a living room somewhere, Vienna or Paris. Yuja's demanding schedule makes maintaining personal relationships difficult. The magic of the touchscreen has helped her to stay connected with friends, family, and fans, but it's no substitute for the real thing. Life is more real in here. <laughs> kind of feel like I'm constantly plugged into this thing. <laughs> it's, it's really just a, this is an external drive of my whole brain, pretty much. That's why I kind of play my concerts, you know? It's a real connection with real people. <laughs> Although there is YouTube and Spotify and all this crap, but <laughs> there's nothing like the, the magic that happens in concert. Yuja is preparing for a one night only solo recital at Carnegie Hall, one of the world's premier classical music venues. Since she burst on the scene as a child prodigy, interest in her career has been high but Yuja needs to consistently sell out important venues like Carnegie to show she's still relevant. So the program tonight, well, the Chopin Sonata, the first one I would say is the, the most difficult. It's always unresolved questioning. play on the day off because I, I have this super superstition if I play really beautiful ones and I'm gonna suck in a concert so <laughs> so the second movement is just like the most fleeting magical little supernatural being somewhere so the second one is just like <laughs> oh flighty um, but in the most charming and poetic way of course the middle part though I hear this part, it's just like, how can a human being so be so, so profound and, and move so many people? It's just something that you, you're just proud to be human and I'm just privileged to play those notes, to recreate. 
create that experience, that, that sound. It goes back four times, but each time there's like some difference. And then the last one is the, I think the most passionate of Chopin. comes back like three times this melody is so haunting it's like this guy I can't believe he's 39 he lived for 39 years and he must be like the most romantic soul ever I will try my best to present such geniuses of our history but nobody knows what happens that's the beauty of concert is you never know with going to a concert and playing a concert same thing you never know what's gonna happen <laughs> okay I'm done oh my god <laughs> Yusha's schedule often includes meet and greet events, giving her the opportunity to interact with her many fans. Her charisma has opened the doors of the classical music world to a new audience. You're so amazing. I love your dresses. Oh, she's a princess. Despite the adoration, Yuja remains grounded. Fame comes and goes, and it's nice to have it. But it, <laughs> yeah, in the end, it's, it doesn't help me play better, <laughs> for sure. Yuja's fans may appreciate her flair for fashion and her endearing charm, but the New York elite concert goer is more difficult to impress. Helping her bridge this gap is her teacher, Gary Grafman, whose apartment provides Yuja with the perfect location for some supervised stretching of her fingers. I love Gary, he's so, so real. I can tell when people are just basically kissing my ass, or they are people who are honest. He's 85 and toned down a little bit, but I can still see the very demanding streak in him. Sometimes, you know, I play one round and it's like, I think you should go practice. <laughs> and Gary is so nice all the time. When he says that, you just feel like, oh, man, I'm bad. <laughs> I need six hours today. You're scary when I have my lessons stuff to say. For how long? <laughs> no, no, For yet. until now. <laughs> I have some pictures when she was a student. Grafman recognized Yuja's ability immediately, but it was her individuality that sold him on her potential, even more than her impressive technique. The best teacher for me, which I was really lucky to have Gary, is not the one that tells you exactly what to do because that's just too easy and I can do it, of course. But what Gary did was he was pointing at where I should go. Part of Gary's guidance included an introduction to Yuja's manager, Earl Blackburn who has the important task of marketing her as the new face of classical music to audiences and music critics, who, in some cases, are taking their old-school sensibilities to an extreme. A number of years ago, Yuja wore a, a dress that she enjoys wearing, a rather short dress, to the Hollywood Bowl. And the review said that if this young lady had worn a dress shorter, we would have had to rate this concert R. 
It was a silly review. And Yuzu's response was the right response, which is, why does anyone care about what I'm wearing? But don't they care about my music? Because that's what I care about. I really don't give a shit about what other people think. Of course, we need other people's uh, enlightenment or inspiration, and uh, but in the end, it's really my decision, and I'm the boss. Yuja first played Carnegie two years ago, riding a surge of interest partly due to her dynamic combination of youth, speed, and flawless technique. Now, age 26, some believe her personal style breaks the mold of what a classical musician should be. Yuja knows that the stakes of this recital are particularly high. The Carnegie Hall concert goer pays top dollar and has lofty and very specific expectations of both music and performer. A sold out show is the only way to ensure that her modern sensibilities are not putting off the old school New York crowd. 